All right, what's up guys? Dr. Dane over here and we got TJ. TJ has been a patient for about two and a half, three months. Uh, he's getting weekly adjustments, sometimes twice a week. He was going to another chiropractor, it was more AK, uh, applied kinesiology uh, favored. Here at the, at the office in the gym, he's doing some of the go-to training with us. You can see some of the videos on my Instagram for that. Um, but we're gonna get him through an adjustment today. Why don't you tell some of the viewers what you've been going through and what's going on? Yeah, I've had um, a couple shoulder surgeries in the past and also a minor cerebral palsy in my left leg. Um, so it makes my thoracic pretty tight. Um, and working with Dr. Dan definitely loosened up, having much better motion in my thoracic spine and just all over. So uh, his left leg, and we have some, some good Instagram videos of some of the training that we're doing with him, but he, his left leg has been his weaker, uh, little more inhibited leg. So we see when he walks, he has just a little bit of like, not a foot drop really, but just a kind of like a little slow walk on the left side, which we've been repatterning with some squats and a lot of like exercises, neuroactivation exercises over in the gym. Uh, but then over here in the office, just go ahead and look straight forward for me. Uh, we've been working on balancing out the muscles in his left shoulder, his right shoulder, his right side neck, right side shoulder, uh, from what we've been working on, typically gonna be the stiffer side and everything's connected down into like his left foot. So we've really in the gym been working his patterning with his swings to get his left engine and his right engine on. When we say the engines, we mean the lats. So we're gonna show you guys an exercise today that's been pretty game changing for him and it's super simple. It's a great sit position that we've been working on to activate the lats, the posterior delts and the triceps. First, like we do with a lot of our patients, we're gonna start off a little hyperbole up to the shoulders. <clears throat> And what we're checking here is his levator scaps and just a little bit of too much, a little bit of um, hypertonicity or a little too much tension up in the left shoulder right here around the left levator scap and the right shoulder. So if anybody's ever kind of dug into your shoulders, you might feel some of the crunchy stuff uh, right around the, uh, the scapular um, uh, notch right up here or the border of the scapula where the levator scap musculature comes down and the upper trap muscular, uh, musculature comes down. So we're gonna do a little hyper bolt first for a couple minutes and then we're gonna get him adjusted up in his neck. One of the things we like to check on patients is the glenohumeral pump or the glenohumeral uh, anterior to posterior movement. And both shoulders over the past couple of weeks have been really freed up so we can feel how the shoulder joints move nicely. When he first started, he had a lot of adhesion formation or what we call like adhesive capsulitis where both shoulders were just like stiff forward. Um, and so with some neuro programming, some brain programming and some muscle work, we've really helped to migrate a lot of the tension down into his lats and his triceps, which is what we wanna see uh, for stronger core activation and neck tension reduction and shoulder tension reduction. <clears throat> so you guys will see on pretty much every patient when we use the hypervolt, uh, we really grind out, dig out, vibrate out this super scapular region, the upper trapezius, the levator scap right through here. Look down, straight down for me. We're gonna have him just move his neck around gently over to the left side and hold right there to really help us elongate. And you might see some of the, really pull that head over. You might see some of the striations up in his neck uh, from the SCM, the scalene muscles right through here. It's got a lot of tension that we've been working on decompressing his neck with some different exercises, muscle work and adjustments. Can you feel that tension when you pull your head? Yeah, for sure. So a great neck stretch to do at your desk is really just a passive slash active pull of the head He's not using his hands. He's just using his neck muscles on the left side to pull and stretch the head and the neck over to the left side. As he does that, it's allowing us to open up the right trapezius, the right levator scalp, and really just get in and dig out some of the muscles up here. Now the hypervolt's great or any uh, vibration gun, there's a number of them out there right now. We like Hypervolt and the Hyper Ice Company because they've got great customer service. It's an awesome American company. And uh, if your gun ever breaks, they're pretty quick to either refurbish it or send you a new one. So the return policy is great. And uh, we've been using these hypervolts in the office probably for two and a half years now with minimal uh, damage or any kind of wearing or tearing. They still work really nicely. Look straight down for me, TJ. 
Now we're going to transfer over to this left side. Look straight down for me. And typically we'll do this, uh, we'll do the hyperbole right over their shirt to avoid skin on skin because we do use the gun on a number of patients. But no problems if you just pull the shirt up and kind of work right around, the, again, that super scapular region, the medial border of the scapula, right up like into the super spinatus region and the upper trap region. Awesome. All right, scoot your butt forward for me. Let's show the YouTube viewers the hand exercise. We're going to press the calluses down, so the five flat fingers, awesome. One of the exercises we've given TJ to start working on is a back chain load for the lats and the triceps. He's going to turn his fingers in a little bit just like they are, and we're going to recommend that he does this at home while he's watching TV. It's a great position to sit in for five or ten minutes. I want you to just lean back into your hands and arch up a little bit and then just gently roll the shoulders open. And one of the things he's gonna work on here is neurological activation, brain power down to the left tricep by straightening the left elbow, and then brain power down to the right tricep, straighten the right elbow. The second thing we're gonna work in, step two, is gonna be a little coil over to the left side, and he's gonna really feel the muscle activation in the tricep and back here in the lap, and then a little coil over to the right side. And he just had a click in the right shoulder, which is just a fibrous adhesion around the scapula. We're gonna work a little bit of that out. But he, as he watches TV at home, instead of just kind of slouching forward or laying on the side, you know, laying on the couch or something like that, he's gonna sit for five to 10 minutes. He's gonna to start to reactivate his lats, his triceps, and his back chain posterior sling by coiling over to the right side and then coiling over to the left side. It's a real simple, easy, effective exercise back to center, push the chest through. Good, perfect. Drop the hands down low right there. And he feels as he does that, how he really softens his neck muscles up to help break that neurological overactivation of tight neck, tight shoulders, tight traps. And now we can feel left coil and right coil, and he's gonna feel the stretch kind of like down in the front of the bicep, the deltoid, the shoulder, maybe even down into the forearm a little bit. Uh, he's also going to feel the load back here in the triceps and the lats. All right, take a break from me. Second thing we're going to do is get into some neck work. And some tips for you chiropractors and you physical therapists. Your body position is just as important as the patient's body position. So what I like to do when I work on clients, get my foot up, I work on my go to drop in and my left foot is towed in a little bit. I'm kind of like up on my left green dot. I'm also working on my back chain as I, uh, as I treat clients throughout the day. It really helps preserve your knees, your ankles, your hips, and your low back. All right, look up for me and down for me. And now we're getting into a little more of the myofascial treatment. Uh, we've been working on TJ. I think it's probably your sixth appointment, maybe fifth, sixth, seventh, somewhere around there. And he did say uh, this week that he had a little more tingling down into the right arm. And something that we did not, I don't think we felt on previous points, he does have a couple of lymph nodes swollen right up here in the right side of the neck, which could be an indication of just an environmental exposure, whether it's dust, dirt, dander, pollen. Uh, he might have a, a small little bacterial or viral infection or cold or something like that. You feel that spot right up there? Mm -hmm. Did we feel that before? Um, I don't remember. I think we have like one lower, like the one down here. When the, not like up here. So that's a, a new little lymph node. Uh, a lot of times, guys, when you have uh, environmental changes, like seasonal changes up here in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of pollen in the air over the past two, three weeks. It's been really humid. The flowers have been blooming. You know, you notice if you sneeze or cough or get the tickle in your throat. Uh, you know, your body is fighting off environmental chemicals and, and particles uh, that the lymphatic system has to filter. And a lot of that ends up kind of trapped up in the lymphatic system. And so a little myofascial release like this really helps to drain the lymph nodes and kind of push some of the fluid deep down 
lower into the drainage passageways, ultimately ending up down in the GI tract and filtered out through the stool and the urine. Look down for me. Look up. Look down. Look up. Look down. Look up. And look down. Awesome. Let's do that left side now. I like to start with a uh, uh, inferior to superior, or a low to high push, and then we finish with a, a high to low push. When we first started with TJ a couple weeks ago, or a couple appointments ago, he was real jammed up on the left side of his neck. Still got a little bit of sprain in the vertebrae. This is right around the C3, C4, C5 region. I feel like I got right in there. And these are the cervical extensor muscles higher up at the base of the skull. We have the suboccipital group. And those are like your headache muscles, your migraine muscles. And these are the guys we want to loosen up nicely. Right through here, look chin to chest, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, and down, and up, and down. All right, good work. All right, let's go face down on the table for me. All right, so in the lower body, one of the things we check is the internal rotation of the legs. His left leg we know is his weaker leg, but it is a little more mobile. So there's a little more heel out movement, a little more internal rotation, whereas this right side's his stiffer side. Now, the other thing TJ was complaining about today was some right side low back pain. And what else? Uh, I guess like a little bit of like hip, yeah, like right hip low back. A little bit of hip low back tension. A lot of that tension up in the right low back, right hip, will also create some inflammation and irritation down here in the right heel and the right plantar fascia. Uh, one of his exercises that he's working on pretty intensely at home is the go to rocker. The go to rocker is one of our positions that we do in the go to system that helps increase the flexibility and the back chain strength of the knee, uh, the hamstrings, the calves, the plantar fascia. This leg looks pretty decent. Pushing on my hand for me here, bro. And stop. And ultimately our goal is to get his flexibility so that the inside or the medial portion of his foot can touch his glute nicely, especially out here in this position where the knee starts to get a little tight, which is an indication of front chain dominance, which means overactivation of the quads and underactivation of the posterior chain, the glutes and the hamstrings. Push into my hand here for me, bro. Push, push, push. Stop. Push, push, push. Stop. Push, 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 and stop. But you can see it's pretty balanced in both legs. So we are gonna do a little more muscle work up in that right side, low back and the right hip to help improve his range of motion into that internal rotation pattern of his right leg. Now, when we get the hands on the spine, we can really feel where he's got just a little curvature in the right side low back, a very mild, uh, I don't even really like the term scoliosis, it's just a mild curvature, uh, which is just an indication that his low back QL muscles, his core is a little imbalanced. And so over in the gym, as we do our training, we're teaching how to balance out the diaphragm, the core muscles, and you guys can see Look at these spinous processes as we work on them. Uh, and what we're doing is just a nice little myofascial technique to really help loosen up the erector spinae muscles and get some blood flow back into that spine. You can see this red spot right up here. Feel that right in there, TJ? Yeah. Oh, there goes a little adjustment even. And you see how this gets real red right here. That's where he needs blood flow at, in his spine, in his rib cage. And with this technique, we're just helping to loosen up some of the fibrotic adhesions and get some, get some good fluid moving throughout the spine, the cerebrospinal fluid especially. We want to pump that stuff up and down from the sacrum up to the base of the skull. Take a deep breath in and exhale out. 
Now, as you breathe in, TJ, I want you to push your belly into the table. So try to focus on that air down into the abdomen. There we go. You guys can see how that was a much better belly breath. Exhale out. As he breathes, do that again for me, deep inhale. You can see how the lumbar spine raises up. So his first breath that he took was a little more of a chest breath. We've talked a little bit about diaphragmatic breathing with TJ, not too much yet, but we'll get into some more, some more breathing coaching with him. But you can see as he consciously directed that air down into his abdomen, he's using much more of the diaphragm, the oblique muscles, do it again, deep breath in for me. Awesome, and now you can see how his lumbar spine really picks up off the table, exhale out. And now he's by just by breathing, improving uh, circulation, cerebrospinal fluid, as well as lymphatic fluid moving throughout the body by utilization of the diaphragm. And then we switch right over to the left side. Good work. Definitely like right around this L2-3 region, even into the TL junction. That's where we're still working on reducing some of the fibrotic adhesions in his low back right here. All right, good work. Tension right here. Yeah, okay. All right, good. You guys see when we position TJ on the table, how his left leg, we already know his left leg toes in a little more, which is a good thing. That right foot's a little more vertical. So, uh, again, you'll see after we get the low back adjustment, one of the things is this right leg's been his stiffer leg, his left leg's been his weaker leg, and that's common where we have a tighter overworked and a looser underwork. So we've really been working on calf strengthening on this back left leg. You guys can probably even see, Bree, if you wanna shoot the, uh, the calf size, the size of the right calf versus the size of the left calf here. See the difference? So TJ, for uh, when, when did you get diagnosed, buddy? Uh, I think when I was like two. Two years old with minor cerebral palsy. Yeah. And you can see the muscle development in the right side versus the left side. Uh, so the dude loves working out. And what we're doing big time in the gym is really pointing out his left leg weakness so we can neurologically activate the calf, the hamstring on the left side to help reduce some of the right side tension. All right, let's get adjusted. Deep inhale. Exhale out, whole way down for me. Good. Good. Deep breath in. Exhale out. Good. One more in. Exhale out. All right. All right, good man. CT. Shoulders down. There we go. Head here. Over here. Good. Right side up over to the right. Easy, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. T-spine is getting loose with the shoulder exercise, especially outside the office. You make so much progress outside the office doing the exercises. So if your Cairo or PT or osteopath is doing a lot of manual adjustments without prescribing rehab exercises, you gotta you gotta team them up. Deep breath in, exhale out, pull way out. Relax it. Good. Other side for me. Gear straight here. Across here. Good. Roll. Deep inhale. Head up. Exhale out. Pull way out. Good. Flatten your back for me. All right. So another key point we've said it in previous videos: adjustments 
are passive. They help. This is his tight uh, outside foot, the left side. Good. Good. TJ's really been going to town on the internal rotation of his feet, so he's got nice flexibility uh, on both feet in this down and in position, but we know his right hip is that internal rotation tightness right here. And again, one of the exercises to go to rocker. Good. All right, down. Let's do this left ankle. And you'll see, good, now right ankle. Good. You'll see as he continues with his footwork, some of the, there's left ankle. Good. Some of the bones still a little stiff down in the feet. You guys might be able to see the right foot dorsiflex or plantar flex is a little easier uh, than the left foot. He's got a little tendonitis on the left outside ankle uh, in the peroneal compartment. Bend this left knee up. Bend this right knee up. Good. Just from some imbalance in that front chain and the back chain, okay? Another good view here, Brie, to take of the right size of the right calf versus the left calf. And these are things that we notice on patients. Uh, they're really pinpoint areas of strength gains that we need to make, which is down in the left leg. Thumb, good. Elbow. Good. Hand here. And if a joint doesn't adjust, that's okay. It's going to with repetition of exercises. Elbow here. And a lot of work as we're working over in the gym. You guys might be able to see the striation right here of his bicipital tendon or bicipital musculature. Um, some of the veins, arteries, nerves, for how tight this guy is here. So one of the things TJ is working on, again, tricep lat activation to reduce this front chain tightness. Bend your elbow. Stop. Bend your elbow. Stop. Bend your elbow. And stop. So it'll probably take us another couple, uh, maybe five, 10 adjustments to really loosen the arm up. Uh, plus rehab exercises. We also have done in the past some grass and some myofascial release in the biceps to really get him to like be more back chain dominant and less tension in that front chain. All right, shoulders down for me. Right here. Right here. One more. Turn, turn, turn. turn. There we go. And one more time on the left side, and then exhale left. There we go. All right, so tall boy, spin to the right. All right, so we did thoracic, lumbar, cervical adjustments, some feet, ankles, knees. And then we set the shoulders back into the back chain posteriorly. So his homework today, scooch forward on the table for me. And all this weekend, fingers down and in, palms flat. That's front chain, put in the back chain, shoulders open, left elbow straight, right elbow straight. He's gonna work on about 10 to 20 reps of a little coil left and a little coil right, right shoulder open more, to really find that right lat, right tricep and help loosen up some of the tension up in his neck. All right, we'll see you guys later on. Thanks for watching. Cool. Thanks.